I want to thank the, um, the nation for organizing this very, very important community meeting. I also want to also thank um, Amiga Radio, who has worked tirelessly, colorful radio, and I'm sure you'll go through the, the list later on, Brother Minister, but I just one of those, I don't want to always, when I go through my meetings at certain points, I got a raise and I just never get it through. And I think that the, the value of these community radio stations, including Galaxy, are, are very, very important so that when people decide, when the state comes to attack us the way in which that they did, we've got a medium in yes. which that we can counteract yes, that. Sir. So I want to big up our community radio stations out there in the community, doing a valuable work. I want to concur with the points that um, brother, young brother Fabinga raised, but I was just want to just deepen that point in why us as black people. I don't even want to use the term black, I want to use the term African. Because we need to understand that the West was built upon our enslavement. A parasitical relationship has been developed between us and the West that continues today. For them to be in their position, we've got to be down here. When our parents were brought into this country, we were brought into this country to do their menial, well, I'm not talking about our ancestors, I'm talking about recent history, brothers and sisters. But we, we, they were still carried over here to do the same function. When they brought us here from the Caribbean, they brought us over here to do their dirty work. Now, if we look at the way in which technology is moving today, we have now, the technology is taken over the work in which that they had planned and expected us to do. We as a community now become surplus labor. Yeah. And this surplus labor means that we've now become a commodity for white people as a whole in terms of keeping them in their own employment, whether it be the police, whether it be the social workers, whether it be the lawyers, whether it be the people that run the prison industrial complex. So I want to make that point that this is not a simple issue why they're targeting us, us as a particular community. We're engaged in a life and death struggle. And I made a point not just to look at us as just black. I made a point as African people. Because you see, if you just want to look at yourself as just being a minority of people within these confines, you could actually not just see yourself as a minority, but you can disempower yourself. We've got an international family in which that when we look at this struggle, we've got to look at it worldwide. And that's my little contribution to add to that point there, my brother. Yes, sir. But be mindful. Thank you. Be mindful that there's nothing more universal than black. Because everything on the planet came out of darkness, into the light. Okay. But that's not the discussion tonight. Okay. Everybody all right? Okay. So what we're going to do, dear brothers and sisters, is there any member of the audience who would like to make a contribution to that first question that's on the board in relation to why are members of our community so often the victims of death in police custody, particular? particularly in comparison to other communities. Dear brother. The reason why there's where it's open season on African people in this country is because there's no comeback. You can do it and get away with it. And we as a people are so disorganized doing our own little thing in our own little corners That's and right. get away with it. Until we come to organize on a specific area as a group of organization, organizations under one umbrella and fight one cause together, they will continue to get away with it. So big people, grown up adults need to grow up work together and bring along the youth. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, brother. Brother, we have brother Twilight Bay with us this evening. Let's give our great brother a big round of applause. And he also wants to make a contribution. Greetings, family. Everyone OK? Yes, sir. Um, brother Minister, to your question. Um, my answer to that question is that when we look at history, as our young brothers pointed out, this country legislated and put laws into play that criminalized the African race or the black race. And that's in the law books. So if you got laws on the book that says you don't have to respect us, that our lives mean nothing, then it's a legal question 
that we're dealing with here. Yes. We're not respected or have the same protection under the law because the law was never written to protect us. Yes. Sir. And that's where we have to look at taking some action. But we can talk about the solutions later. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Brother Twyla. Thank you. Now, because time's the enemy, I'm going to jump to the next question. So the second question that we want to discuss this evening is what kind of service are we receiving from the police? And I'm going to ask Brother Kenny to address this question. Um, you're right. The, the kind of service that the police are offering us is, is one of called racial profiling. What, what they generally tend to do is looking at you know, ways of cutting in, cutting themselves, cutting young people into the police. And what they've been using over, I said, the last 40, 50 years is stop and search. That's where, as, as, a, as, a black, as a black man, you're more than likely to have your first encounter with a police officer. And what happened is, is that they're taught, and when you look at the training, the manual, the training manual says to them quite clearly, is that we, what we're going to do, it tells them that you are going into a community no different to Iraq, no different to a war zone, and where people are going to want to do something for you. So you've got to be aware of this. So, so this is why they come in with the aggression when they come around a stop and search, because they're told that the first person's there can be asking a question, the second one is looking for you at your body language. And because black people like to express themselves using their hands and certain gestures, they are taught in their training manual that's showing aggression. Yeah? And if, you, if a person please stop you and say they suspect you're something and you challenge it, again, that's dissent. And all those things are things that they are, will want to jump on. And, and I'm saying this is that what they find in the black community and what they find is the easy picking is, as it says quite, quite clearly, we're not organized. So there's no other community that would have allowed their children and their youngsters to get stopped and searched in the numbers that we do. You've got to understand that this is done by deed. This is done to, what it is, is to try to get the, the, the young black men aged between 50 and 40 um, DNA on their database, right? And they're well on their way to achieving that sort of target. Now, what's happened is, is that the 2011 uprising that started in Tottenham has kind of put a dent into that, where they've had to stop and say, whoa, what's going on here? And all their reports now are showing the damage that Stop and Search has done. Now, as I said, don't forget, if you're more likely to get stopped and search, uh, and get your first encounter with the police on Stop and Search, that means that when they're now uh, suspecting you of being involved in, say, gang cr in gun crime, what they're told in their briefing is that you are a serious player in not only in the UK, but in Europe. They, 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 they throw misinformation about the person and hype them up to be something they're not. And so, so therefore, when they come in and they execute whatever they, they call execute, in this case, in Mark Douglas' execution, quite clearly, it's, it shows you how easy to get it wrong. But yes, but we all can have a bad day at the office. But if we don't own up to that bad day and learn lessons from it, we are burying our head in the sand from making progress if we are not acknowledging what the issues are so that we can improve on it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, dear brother. Is there any other panel I don't know if anybody's ever heard... Sorry, uh, greetings, family. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of David Gilbertson. Yeah? David Gilbertson is a QPM. He holds the Queen's Police Medal. And it's the highest honour you can receive in serving in the Metropolitan Police. David Gilbertson came down to Bernie Grants and gave a lecture to us down at Bernie Grants. One of the key elements of what David Gilbertson explained to us was that when police are trained at Hendon, they are trained to treained to treat the community on a them and us scenario. So when Ken's 
explaining to you that when they're coming into the communities, especially in inner city London, they are trained to view that as a war zone, where we are under the illusion that it's Dixon of Dot Green and that um, they're here as part of the community. According to David Gilbertson, QPM, Queen's Police Medal, in the Bernie Grant's lectures, he explained to us quite categorically and quite clearly that the service that we will receive is them and us. It ties into the first question where the young brother Respect Fire Bingy says, we are in a war footing at this present time, ladies and gentlemen. If anybody cannot see that, yeah, I feel very sorry for them in this day and time. Because some people are under the illusion and have the ideology that it's a Dixon of Doc Green scenario and the police are perfect and they don't do any wrong. But if you ever need to find out what service you're getting from the police force, you can go onto The Guardian, you can type in David Gilbertson, G-I-L-B-E-R-T-S-O-N, QPM, and bring up the Bernie Grant lectures, and his words are there quite clearly about the service that we receive in the community. Thank you, brother. Thank you very much. <laughs> With that said, I want to offer that question to members of the community, my sister. Yes. Yes, please, so we can see you. I sis and I'm from one voice community I would say the service that the police are doing is exactly what they intend to do. Mm -hmm. As you were saying, you know the, the old tune about um officer comes from you know overseer, the mm -hmm. sound of the police. Yeah, that is what the police are there for. They are overseers. Mm -hmm. It's a psychological and a, a, a physical a economical attack mm -hmm. on particularly African men, and this has been going on since the first uh, thieves came to Africa and took people. So it's, it's exactly what's expected. And to add to it, part of the problem is our response. What I've learned, I spent sort of four or five years sitting on boards, the highest level in Scotland Yard, talking to the police as a community consultative person, much like Ken. Ken and I know each other from those forums. And the problem is we deal with the police on their terms, and we need to stop doing that. It's a complete waste of time. Sitting there, smiling, talking to very sensible, well-spoken senior officers, have a cup of coffee and biscuits, they tick the box, they go away and they murder our youths on the street. So what we need to do is we need to create our own systems of engagement or non-engagement, and we need to do it ourselves. And I think the point made about the fact that we don't even have our own spaces to control what we do and how we do it is a big issue. Sister, please.